Do you use Home Assistant? How about Notion? If you use any of those two, I can show you how you can connect Home Assistant to Notion using Node-RED as a bridge between the two. And this is more useful than you think. So in my previous videos, I showed you how I had an automation that updated aspects of Notion using Node-RED. And it also gave information to Home Assistant to let me see statistics as to like what's going on, how many documents I'm watching. And my Home Assistant dashboard even gave me options to run automations that will affect Notion. Here's how I did that. If we take a look here, we have these two cards, this watch documents one and this pending data. This card here basically shows how many documents my smart home is watching within Notion. Notion, I'm able to target which cards I want my smart home to watch and see and this lets me see how many of those documents I'm currently watching. What's pretty cool is that I can create an automation around this that makes sure that I'm not watching too many documents because these documents can get kind of hefty. You can create an automation that prevents your Notion documents from basically overtaxing your system. In my previous video, I showed you how I was able to get a whole lot of work done in a short amount of time by automating various aspects of my YouTube creation process. And it does this by processing the Notion document that I have and giving it features like transcribing, uh, creating blogs and emails, creating titles and thumbnails. And that happens here within this system. This is a document that I have within my Notion database or Notion account. And I want this to be watched by Home Assistant. So I have this property here called K. And if I have it checked and I change this process to not started, now my Home Assistant environment will watch this. Now, what you would expect to see is this number go from nine to 10 and this one go from zero to one. Watch documents are all of the documents that have a check mark on it. Pending data are all of the documents that have a check mark and have the status of not started. Let me show you how these cards are created. I'm gonna add a card and then let's just take an entity card and then we're gonna do, let's say all watched. So we have this sensor here called all watch documents. When I click on it, we can see that it goes from nothing to nine. And then we can change the units to just notion docs. Cool. So where did that sensor come from? Cause you saw that I clicked the all watch documents sensor. I'm pretty certain you don't have that sensor. Here's how you can create that. These are numbers. So when we look at the state, the state for these entities need to be numbers. And these numbers in particular represents the number of documents that it's being, that's being watched. When we look at the query, we're looking for and filtering for all of the checkbox that are true. This is looking for all of those. You can learn more about this query here by reading Notion's documentation. You can also learn more information here by clicking on the query database. And you can see here when you look at the help that it shows you what kind of input it expects. So you see payload here, filter, it's an or filter, and it's looking at these properties. And you can click on this link for more information to find out details as to how all of this works. In my case, all I'm interested in is all of the documents that have this checkbox, this property with the checkbox equals to true. Once it returns all of that information, I have another function node here that processes it a little bit more. In my case, we have here this message.documents that I'm initializing with this information. This message.payload is the information that came from the node before. In that case, this is the query database node. So this is passing me back all of the Notion documents that passed that filter test. And when we look at the results, I'm looking for any results that are valid or that exist. Technically, I probably don't need this, but it's here anyways. And then from here, I am creating this new object that has the ID of the document, the title of the document, and then I'm just doing this process state. So this section here, let me show you. I want the name of this section. So I wanna know what this status is. So that's what this is. I'm looking at the properties process and then select and it's the name. So all of this is gonna return as an array 
to this particular property or attribute. And then we're gonna look at that same document and we're gonna filter for all the ones that are not started. So in this case, anything that has the not started tag, it's going to show up within this list here of pending documents. Well, we have this refresh notion statistics node. This is an interesting node because similar to how we have custom sensors, we can create custom buttons. And that's this node right here. I'll, I'll demonstrate. Let's create a brand new button called uh, Hello World. I'm gonna show you that we don't have any buttons called Hello World. So we're going to go to the dev tools. We're gonna look at this filter entities. We're gonna say, hello, nothing here. So let's go back. This plus button here, we're gonna choose Home Assistant. This is basically going to pair this new button into my Home Assistant instance. This is of type button, although we have all of these other versions. So we want a button and we're gonna call this one, hello world. That's it. Oh, let's just say this here, hello world. That's gonna make this show up here as hello world. So we've now created our button. If I click done and then deploy it, it's now successfully deployed. If we come back here, look at that, button.hello world. We now have a custom button. Let's add this button to that card that we saw earlier. Let's change this particular card to one that can let us add a button to it. We're gonna add the pending one. So we have the unprocessed documents. So we have all the watch documents, the unprocessed documents, and then we're gonna add a button here and we have hello world. Great, so we have now this all watch documents, which is 10, which is the same as this one. We have the unprocessed documents, which is this one. And then we have the refresh, which will do the same thing as this button here. How can we run actions on this new custom button? The fun part about Node-RED is that any button that you create within it, that node also becomes a point of a trigger. So if you were to click that button within Home Assistant, that button here or that node here within Node Red will be the trigger to start any automation that you want. So in my case, we're gonna take this and let's attach it to a debug node so you can see that this does work. I'm just going to just do complete object deploy. So when I press the button in Home Assistant, we're going to see that we're going to find information here in this corner. All right, so let's see what happens. Yeah, it ran, but nothing happened. And that's to be expected because we haven't processed the document. I have another automation here called process pending data. So this is a custom button that you see right here, process pending data that will process the document and give it extra attributes that lets me do interesting things like, for instance, transcribe any audio that's on it, uh, create titles and thumbnails from it, create blogs, emails, all of this that you've seen in this previous video here. Let me show you what a process document looks like. So here, when we take this new document, it's in the state of not started. This is still checked. At the bottom, we just see the end of the table and nothing else. I wanna be able to do, to turn this into a blog as well as to generate an email from it. So by clicking this process pending data, I should have those options available to me in that document. But I want you to notice one other thing. At the end of this automation, we have this trigger notion stats refresh, which will go through and it will refresh all of this, the sensors that we've created previously. So the all watch documents, that will be refreshed. All pending, the pending document sensor, that will also be refreshed. But if you remember the rules, this watch document represents all of the documents that have the check mark and this pending one represents all of the documents that are in the state of not started once it's been processed that state that we see here will go from not started to let's see what else we have initial ideation so this is going to switch states and as a result this pending documents will go from one to zero 
when we look at the function node beforehand, we have this process pending documents, and you can see that it's looking for or it's filtering for all the documents that have the state of not started. Once we process that document, this state will change from not started to initial ideation, meaning that there will be no more documents there. So this length here, pending date, uh, pending documents length will turn to zero. Again, if you want to understand more about how the sensor nodes work, watch my previous video where I explain about how you can create sensors within node red and see it within home assistant, but let's press it and see what happens. Look at that. It went to zero and you can see that went to zero as well. Let's take a look at this document. At the bottom, we now see some new actions. Transcribe, revise, title and thumbnails, draft blogs, draft email. So this works. So we're able to now input information into this document by processing it. And that was triggered in Home Assistant as you just saw. So you can actually create all sorts of other automations and actions and have those buttons show up in Home Assistant in a dashboard. And then you can just trigger things as you see fit. This also means that you can send information like text to Home Assistant so you can read out certain information from, let's say, your documents. For example, in the same dashboard, we can click on the attributes. So this is the ID of one of the documents. This is the title for that one. And you can see the state. And this information here, this ID, title, and process state, that looks very familiar because that's this information right here, ID, title, and process state. All of this information is being passed to that set custom sensor, and that custom sensor is passing it along to Home Assistant so Home Assistant can show it. Here's a bonus for you. Here's a custom dashboard using all of the information we just learned. I'm creating a new dashboard page using the experimental sections. Here, you can see that I have a list of all the documents that I'm watching, as well as the same actions that you saw from before. So the process pending notes and then the refreshing of Notion statistics. And of course we can see how many documents are being watched and how much are unprocessed. You already know how to set this up. This is exactly the same. This here is just an image that I just pulled and I'm just using it as a header. This section here is what I meant by using the attributes and passing notes or text to Home Assistant so you can display it within your dashboard. Right now I'm showing the title as well as the state of them. And then this is just easy way to just number to see what I'm looking at. You can create this with the markdown card. Here, I just have the title up here, the document list, and then just simple text. And then I'm starting, this is the notation to create a table. And then I'm looping through the sensor, the all watched document sensor, and I'm looking at the documents attributes. Remember here, we have this documents key. This is where we're passing in the ID, the title, as well as the state. So for this custom sensor, I'm looking at the documents attribute. And then for each of those attributes, I'm simply looking at the index, which is giving me the number, the title, which is giving me the title here, and the state, which is giving me the state that we see here. To make this very fancy, what I want to do is make this clickable. So whenever I click this icon or this this uh, the text, it'll open up the Notion document related to it. So let's add that in now. Let's look at what the URL for each document looks like. We're gonna click on these meatball menu. We're gonna go to copy link. We're gonna paste it. So we can see this is what the URL looks like. So there's more to it. So let's see what happens if we just take this section here and then merge it with that HTTPS notion.so slash notion.so forward slash this. Let's go to the browser and see what happens. So it works since that's all we need, we can create the link right now. So we can go here, put this in square brackets, parentheses, and then we say HTTPS, 
and this ID is dynamic. So we're going to do the squiggly brace and then we say attribute dot ID. So then now they're clickable. So let's save it, click done, and then let's see what happens. Hmm, this looks about right. Refresh. Hmm. Let's see what is missing. Ah, I see. Okay, if you look at this, this one doesn't have all of the hyphens and other accoutrements in between, but ours, when we did it, if we take a look, comes with all of this stuff in between, which is most likely throwing it off. So we can easily clean that up. So let's clean this up in node red. That's going to be the easiest for me because I am not the most familiar with YAML. You know what? Let's try it with YAML. Replace string. So let's see what is here. Nope, not what I need. Hmm. Okay, maybe not this. Let's say, let's see what's here. Okay, so we have a replace function. Let's try it out here. And then this is the ID that we want to fix up. So then we can say pipe and we're going to replace the hyphens with nothing. And then we're going to save it. And we're going to come back to done. Okay, so it looks like it's correct. I'm seeing it in the bottom left hand corner. So let's click it. There we go. Problem solved. So we can do the same within node red. So if we come here and then we do ID dot re keep doing that replace all and then we're going to replace all hyphens with empty strings. If we click done and deploy. Okay. So we're going to click if we take a look at this and we look at the IDs, we can see that they have the hyphens in them. And then when we click refresh document, okay, it looks like it finished. And then if we check this out again and all of the hyphens are gone. Realistically, the sky's the limit. You have a lot of flexibility as to what you can show and what you can do, and even what you can trigger between Home Assistant and Node Red. So I don't want you to think that Node Red is like this whole separate automation system, though it, it can be. But within the context of a smart home system like Home Assistant, it's more like a suit of armor that can extend Home Assistant's capabilities. If you're interested in seeing how I got all of this information to show up here. Watch this next video. I'm going to dive a little bit deeper into how I manipulated Notion at from Home Assistant, or I guess in this case, Node Red.